I'm going to talk a little bit about what Power Pivot is firstly, and then once I've spoken about what it is, I'm also going to talk about what it will be in the new release of SQL. If any of you didn't notice, Microsoft SQL Server um, vNext, codename Denali, went into a public community technology preview last night. So CTP3 is out. You can go download a Power Pivot version 2 beta if you want to play with that. Obviously, don't do that on a machine you're doing production work on. Stick to Power Pivot 1. But the next version is coming. So let's spend a few minutes and talk about what Power Pivot is. And then I'll talk a little bit about what it will be in, in the next version. So Power Pivot is three things. It's an in-memory, highly compressed column store. And that probably means very little to most of you because what, what, what do those things actually mean? So in-memory is pretty simple. What it means is that a Power Pivot workbook doesn't sit on your disk and needs to be read out off the disk in a very slow manner. It takes all of the data that you've got and it dumps it into RAM. As soon as it's in RAM, it's of course much, much faster. Now we all know that if you've got a um, 8 gig uh, chunk of data, you're probably not going to be able to put that into RAM on your on your laptop. You know, I mean, some people have an 8 gig laptop. You're still not going to fit 8 gigs of data in. So in order to be to fit it in memory, what the Microsoft guys have done for us is they've gone out and they've bought this engine called VertiPack. What VertiPack does is it compresses the data enormously, and I'm talking really, really enormously. 10 to 1, 16 to 1, those, those sort of compression ratios. Now, what you do need to understand when you're thinking about Power Pivot is the fact that the way that they've done that is they've done what's called a column store. Now, I'm going to jump into Excel very quickly. I'm going to show you the difference between a column store and a row store. So, let's assume that we've got um, a product name and we've got a date and we've got a price and we've also got a geographic area and maybe we've got a salesperson. Okay, so the product name, um, because I demo so much of AdventureWorks, I'm going to say that the product name is a specialized mountain bike. It was uh, sold on, on the 12th, sold for and uh, what's probably $859. It was sold in uh, perhaps Calgary, and the salesperson was uh, Cosman. So this is uh, very typically what you would see in a row store. You've got this table. Now you want to compress those things. These are very very different types of things. Now let's say that you also sold several specialized mountain bikes. Uh, you sold most of them on those days. That was the price. But you sold them Alberta, uh, New York, Jacksonville, and a couple more in Alberta. A lot of people cycling Alberta, I guess, because it's uh, summer over there. And Tom and David. Alright, so just to go with the Alberta. If we have a look at the Can't hear you more. You lost your uh, audio, Mark.
guys, can you hear me now? Ah. Okay. Yeah, uh, cool. I, I, I apologize for that. I'm not sure what went on. All right, so what I, that, you say after the first set of columns. Okay, so if we've got a row store there, right, that's about where you, where you uh, asked me after I put Albert as a salesman. Okay, so let's go back to this. If you start with this, this is a row store. So we've actually physically laid the data on the disk, and we've laid down specialized, and then we've laid down uh, 2011, 07, 12, and actually the bits on the physical hard drive platter or the SSD or whatever are actually laid down in that order. All right, so that's, that's a typical row store, that's a SQL database, and it's worked pretty well for a lot of things. Now, if, if we go off and we say, right, what we want to do is we want to create this thing called the column store, we want to actually store our data differently. So what we're going to do is we're going to take specialized mountain bike, and instead of going one off the other like that, we're going to say, let's do specialized, 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 specialized. And now we know that that's what we've got first. And then the second thing we've got is, uh, sorry, the second thing we've got is the dates over there. And we also know when we're doing compression, if we store a token for this thing, we can say, do a lookup, one must be specialized, and we store that token one over there. Okay, and then we move to the next column, and this time we don't actually have any tokens because they're all, exact, they're all exactly the same. Price, we can do the same thing. Right, not much of a saving over there, but a little bit of data saving. Now, with this one, this is where it gets a little bit more complex. Here we know that one is Calgary, two is Alberta, uh, three is New York, four, and then two and two. Of course, we're saving those pieces of information. Now, what that gives you is it firstly gives you a huge amount of compression, and it's quite a lot more complicated. There's a lot, lot of other things that happen behind the scenes than that. That's, that's really the basic idea of the column store. Um, once we get to the point that it's really compressed like that, we load it into memory, and you can then play with it, and you can slice and dice. So that's the one thing, and that's really the VertiPack engine. Now, in the next version of SQL Server, that VertiPack engine is being taken not just into PowerPivot, it's actually being taken and you can create a VertiPack index on your data warehouse uh, tables, which is pretty awesome because now you get this greatly performance index which you can use on normal tables. Um, the other thing uh, that they're doing with it is they're actually going to integrate that VertiPack engine into analysis services. I'll talk a little bit more about that now. Now, that's the first half of Power Buff. That's the technical piece. And it's, it's awesome and it's exciting and for the uh, techies like me, we love to get into the nuts and bolts of it. But if you're a business user, you're like, well, you've got this highly compressed data store and it does stuff. Um, what, what does it give me that building a server with lots of hardware doesn't give me? 